Hello, <clears throat> hello guys, and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup series by Smashcast TV. We have a match between Rex Dragon Kaon and Geek Fam. It is the second match and last match of the day in this best of two. That will decide in what position they will play in the playoffs. That said, our RQ already win uh, the first match of this. Jesus fucking Christ, Dota! It's starting to be a bit ridiculous, honestly. Like it just crashes every two seconds during the drafting phase. All right, let's go back in. Let's see if this works. Slow. Okay, we have the Pro of the Cup series by Smashcast TV. Red Scrum Pan are fighting against Geek Fam. Like I said, last match, last best of two of the day. We are currently in the draft. The first match goes to the Indonesian team quite convincingly. Honestly, once the once the Bersuplex started getting a lot of power, they just destroyed Geek Fam. In the second match, hopefully Geek Fam can recover a bit and get those valuable valuable points that you can acquire from a tr uh, from a tie. That said, guys, my, num my name is D Swordfish. I'll be your caster for today. Let's get right into the draft, shall we? Raxicom Kaon, ban out the Ursa, the Lena, the Trimbersaw, and the Earth Spirit. Pick up a Trim Protector, Shadow Fiend, Avalon Disruptor. We'll talk about this in a second because Geek Fam have picked up the Crystal Man, Ember Spirit, Slark, batting out the Bristol Black. No surprise, Dark Sphere, no surprise, Legion Wagon, no surprise, and Clock, no surprise. Uh, <laughs> they hate those heroes. Uh, they've already been dealing with a Dark Sphere from their own Dark Sphere, and the 5 up is a pretty decent Dark Sphere, so you don't want to deal with that. And obviously, Leech Commander, Clock, with the story in the last game is pretty good. That said, uh, Next come Kion go for a very different lineup this time. They go for the Fibo's favorite hero, which is Avadon Omnet. This is what he likes playing the most. Uh, and a bit of team fight with uh, Shadow Fiend, Disruptor, and Trim Protector all combining. It's not as good as the Darkseer, but it's better than last game's Legion Commander. That's an interesting pick. It's better than last game's Legion Commander. You offer some sustain in lanes, in addition to some good lane heroes. The Disruptor can get ca can get kills really easily, so it's actually really hard to run away from him or play aggressively against a support like Disruptor. Trim Protector in the bottom lane helps the Avadon survive for quite a long time, and it'd be surprising and Avadon didn't do a good job in lane. And then Shadow Fiend in the mid lane. Obviously, we all know how powerful he can be. Especially against an Ember Spirit. Once he gets a couple levels, he's pretty much set. He doesn't even need that Cog's boost. If you don't want to win the early game that badly, you can get you know up to level 3, level 4 easily. And then you start getting the damage obviously from your souls and from your shadow races it's easy to also counter the or take away the flame guard from the ember spirit and you also have the help from the chimp protectors living armor which is a great tool to try to survive ember spirit in lane he does have a lot of he does have a lot of damage over time but in general your auto attacks uh, will be blocked, though the auto talks will be blocked by the living armor. As for Geek Fam, we have an Ember Spirit, Crystal Maiden, Slark, and Punch lane, or lineup. They are going for a bit more of a ganky lineup, ensuring an easy lane for Slark with the Crystal Maiden and the Ember Spirit to kind of help him snowball, right? In the early game, the Slark won't have as much of an impact, especially if he doesn't do that well in the lane, because it could happen. So they run a lane just in case to start Crystal Maiden to ensure that he is not that hard for him. The Punch is also a pretty good lane controlling hero in the early game with a Rot, with the Rot ability. And the Ember Spirit himself is going to get a bit of a snowballing potential with uh, securing the mid game and then subsequently winning the late game. That's a nice ban of the Omnite, but instead Geek Fam of course picked the Magnus, a much more preferred pick for them, especially in combination with the Stark. What could Rex Dragon pick? Rex Dragon Kaon pick as their last he hero. It's a carry. It has to go against the Slark. An anti mage comes to mind. It's actually a pretty decent possibility. Good against uh, Burst Spirit in general, too, because of his high amount of physical damage and the fact that you can take away the enemy armor. However, if you are wanting to go for some more traditional carries, I actually really do like the Vengeful Spirit for Rex Dragon Kaon, or alternatively, even the PA. Some hero that can, has a bit of, can have a bit of single target disables or slows or something of the sort and a lot of damage that can really destroy the ember spirit of course the life stealer is also a possibility who's not too weak against eh, he's not the best against the stark i really would rather see anti-major or like i said pa or Sven Sven's ready. No, or the Sven. the Sven was the last option for some reason my dota crashed again oh well, no surprise then the Sven was the last option here for the guys at rrq 
That's a weird choice, frankly. I know they played a lot. It was one hero that I was thinking, I know they want to pick it, but I don't want to say it because I'd rather not them I'd rather them not pick it. Because it's a terrible pick here. It's just a hero that's been really phased out because of the change in the jungle. He doesn't do too well with the Abron, though the Disruptor does help him out. The Fodic Shield, though it seems really powerful because it spells off stuns. Uh, he's gonna get kited regardless. Uh, they fought, I mean, the Curse of Avernus helps him out, but it's better to have a Centaur, for example, for Rex Frickum Kaon. The Trim Protector makes him kind of unkillable in the early game, but he suffers a lot against the amazing amount of magical damage that Geek Fam is bringing to the table. In fact, if you look at Geek Fam's lineup, you'll see that they are mostly a magical damage lineup with a bit of physical damage coming out at the end. But for the beginning, it's only magical damage with Ember Spirit, Slark, and Pudge, and Magnus. I mean, the Shock with the Rot, the, even the Frostbite, uh, the Pounce, the Dark Pact, of course, both magical damage sources, and Flame Guard, and Searing Chains. I don't know what they're expecting to do with this Fen Warcry. We'll see in a second with this match, with this next match of the day. Let's not forget his last match of the group stages so that means that the qualifiers will be coming up next any other matches we have for the pd cup sca tournament we will or sca version of this tournament we will be it'll they'll be best of threes and they'll be deciding much more than just simply who gets points but rather who gets into the winners lowest brackets or even eliminated from this tournament that said i'm watching the teams now advance into the game with a bit of a tp from asil to put some offensive warning raji knows there's someone around here in fact raji could get a kill on asil this is a dangerous thing. Raji already starts attacking him. Goes for low on Rod, of course, with the wind lace and the auto attacks. Aesol needs some help from his team. Uh, Raji's determined to do this. They're forcing Aesol to go for the level 1 glimpse. It's better than giving out the first blood. Yeah, usually you want to go level 1 Thunderstrike, obviously, because of the extra damage it gives you. But that's why you reserve the 1 point in case they, the Pudge finds you in the smoke gank and just starts following you with Rod and kills you. Right, the best thing to do is just get the, that 1 level in... And glimpse early on, don't lose the first blood. And sure, you don't have the Thunderstrike to harass the enemy off later, the Magnus, but you'll be fine anyway. That said, guys, let's so let's start with the presentation of the teams. My name is D Swordfish. I will be your caster for today. And let's see what Geek Fam and RQ are bringing to the table today. We have Geek Fam on the Radiant side. The good guys, D He, will be playing the mid laner Ember Spirit this game. Psyonix playing the Slark in the carry position. And the first support is Raji with a Pudge. Second support being Net on the Crystal Maiden. And finally, in the off lane position, Velo will be styling off his Magnus today. Now, in the RRQ side, the Indonesian team is going to be showing off for the Dire side, Koala, as the Sven in the carry position. Off lane, the offlaner for this game is going to be the Fi Boy as the Abaddon. Sheffer will be the first support, Trim Protector, second support being Disruptor, played by Ace, and finally in the mid lane, a Shadow Fleen, played by Yabiu. That was a fantastic skewer, by the way. I didn't even, I can barely see that. It's just... Stormhammer, he tried to Stormhammer and he just got skewered right there. Geek Fam not only managed to get three bounty runes out of this, but one for the Magnus is great. And also forcing this van into this position early on. And it's such an annoying position because you're not meant to be there so that you can actually not give TPs to your carry when, while he's there. Ace will be trying to soak some experience while Sven just stays here for a long, long time. Koala acknowledging that his presence is going to be a bit lacking in the early game. Uh, and Velo, I mean, that's why you won't go for level 1 skewer as opposed to level 1 in power. You should be okay with level 1 skewer, frankly. You should be okay with level 1 skewer against a disruptor. <laughs> I actually don't know how they're going to help Koala here. He's real stuck. He's real stuck. Oh, there. The TP. Is it going to reach him? It even stacks on the way with an efficient support. Oh, you cannot give the TP. I knew it. There's not. You're not meant to be stuck here, so you're not going to be able to give the TP with just the disruptor. You're actually forced to use the courier for this. Yeah, there's a courier coming with a TP for Koala. Koala's starting to get antsy. He's getting nervous. He's losing a lot of time. That's why they're not killing him there. I mean, that's a whole minute. Look at the difference right now between Geek Fam and RQ just for this play. It's five last hits already on the Slark. Pretty happy with that start. And oh, in the middle lane, meanwhile, Yabiu from RQ says, Screw it. We don't have a Sven. We'll just get a kill ourselves. Tihi is going to go down. And I actually don't know how this happened because he only had damage and a leech sheet. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they go on to Five Boy. They actually managed to get a double, no, a kill for a kill. Raji and Sionx lose their partner, the Crystal Maiden. But in exchange, they kill off Five Boy. Five Boy, who was playing a bit too aggressively there. Now the Sven's finally gone. Uh, this is too funny not to watch. Koala finally leaves his uh, spot in the cliff. And he's able to join, rejoin the game. That was a pretty good. That was a pretty good skewer. So kudos to him for that. 
Meanwhile, in this mid lane, okay, so he I don't actually missed that first blood because I had no clue that was gonna happen, frankly. Uh, from the Shadow Fiend onto the Ember Spirit, low armor, sure, but he didn't have that many souls or shouldn't have had that many souls alone without rate levels and raises. He actually only had levels in Necromastery and somehow still got a kill against the Ember Spirit with a Searing Chains and Flame Guard build because uh, he was level two and. And uh, Teehee was level 2 and, and Shadowfee was level 1 when it happened. That is really weird, honestly, Teehee. I just don't want to know what to say. I wish I would have watched that kill to see what exactly would happen. I know he's trying to play a bit aggressively, but he's going to be punished for it early on. And with the help of the Pudge, they should be able to do a bit more. However, Pudge is not that strong against Shadowfee. But it might seem like he is because he does offer a lot of damage and Shadowfee has no escape mechanisms. And the truth is, Pudge, when he runs up to you, you can just start attacking him. And with the great amount of damage that Shadowfee has, he's able to kill the punch before the punch kills you so the only real issue here is Tihi getting that counter kill afterwards after the punch has committed suicide and you know the punch just Tihi just goes in with searing chains flame guard and kills a shadow fiend that's fine you might be afraid of that but you're definitely not afraid um like i said the the punch himself just walking up to you and destroying you with a rock that's not really a problem oh root crystal made him root really powerful onto the fire boy Sheffer though We'll be ensuring that this guy stays alive. They also have an aphotic shield, so it's kind of hard to kill them. I'm keep looking at Koala, seeing if there's something happening in the top lane, but it seems like there's not much action. And Sheffer from behind puts an, an offensive ward. Quite a weird offensive ward. It actually does see through this weird tree. So that's okay. Usually you put one over here to see the enemy movements that in the lane, especially when the lane is so pushed, but I guess you do want to see the enemy rotations. Jesus Christ, you have you. Okay, in the middle lane, you have you goes down. Followed by the Ember Spirit. The top lane. Nope. The damage between... Uh, sorry, the last sitting between Koala and Velo is not going too well. Because Velo actually got a lot of early levels. And as a result, he got a lot of... I'm just going to stay in this middle lane. Because he gets, seems suicidal. Um, they got a lot of early levels. A lot of early assets. You get a, a good amount of kills. Sorry, you get a good amount of uh, farm in the early game. And the result is actually not crushing necessarily, but doing a lot more work against the embers against the uh, Sven. He's only level three. The level five to level three difference is quite considerable at this point. You also have, you know, you have more points in your shockwave, which you don't care about the war We already talked about how weak the Sven pick is in general, but the Sven pick is even worse if you're playing from behind because you don't have that many stacks to make him recover anymore, and those ancients don't stack as quickly anymore, which is the big stack that Sven always goes for. Now in the bottom lane, they seem to want to go on Psionics, but that's just harassment, honestly. He can always just and lead sheet and even the curse of Avernus with a simple dark pact so he should be perfectly fine against the attack from the abaddon t he's using a shrine in this middle lane he's level four the magnus is level five mind you so geek fam are quite happy with how this uh, top lane has gone and so is the slark right the slark with 25 last is not too too unhappy however the abaddon is 17 which is not bad at all just for being you know kind of a dual lane especially with having a pudge around you which wasn't helping in this bottom lane at all and t is still well pretty equal against you there's the hook catches out yabby you have you have to use the raise but that was the middle raise and now the short raise comes out but it's not going to take out the flame guard t will end up getting this kill against Yabiyu while in the top lane the shockwave the final shockwave from the Magnus announces his death as Sven will be taking this kill as well that's a good combination both in top and bottom or sorry both in top and mid and now in bottom lane that's the last kill they want to get the five boy magnificent hook by Raji they catch him out with a pounce of the dark pad tries to take it away with the phonic shield but there's a slight bug Abaddon which won't dispel the pounce for some reason Asel now gets the kill onto T Raji as a result but Raju will be able, or Sonax will be able to kill off Aso in time and at least punish that rotation. Right, what I was mentioning there, and sorry I went half hype cast, half analyst, I just couldn't stop myself from saying that. The Aphotic Shield should dispel the Pounce. It's really interesting, actually, the interaction between these two spells. It should dispel the Pounce. It's been a bug that's been in the game forever because Pounce was be made dispellable in a patch. And in fact, BKB and Monta Style both dispel Pounce, but. And the, since the tooltip is wrong, they actually haven't fixed this, which is that abilities like, for example, Photic Shield or Press the Attack don't actually dispel the pounce, even though they should. Because of how the interaction works with the hero, uh, it, it's very weird. How the interaction works with pounce is actually one of the weirdest spells in the game. Leap also should be able to leap away from pounce, but it doesn't because you're rather... And, anyway, a lot of weird interactions. The point is, you can't actually dispel the Photic Shield, so I'm not really vulnerable to the sack from the Stark. In fact, now the Root comes in, he's already used the Photic Shield, the Searing Chains as well to add some damage, and with the damage from the Psionics, they'll be able to get another kill onto Abaddon. They mark the time for some strange reason. It's actually RQ who marks the time. I can only imagine 
I mean, there's an RP used. There's, there's no ultimate used. Hmm. Not entirely sure what they marked the time for. Maybe the hook. Maybe the punch rotation. Maybe the TP. Anyway, punch rotation in the mid lane. Yabu joining in. And hey, oh, sorry, Tihi joining in to kill Yabu. And hey, there's an easy kill, they say. And the easy kill is actually on Raji. Using the living armor, Yabu survives. In fact, Ember Spirit says, nope. I don't want to go onto this guy. He seems way too tanky. And that's why you max living armor first, boys, onto a trim protector. Because it gives you that killing potential in the mid lane. Without you needing to be there at all. There was no rotation wasted. In fact, the rotation was wasted by GeekFab itself. Rotating the punch into the middle lane. And instead, they actually... Not only does the Shadow Fiend survive, but he also gets a kill. Ooh, that was a pretty good hook if it got into five boy. But instead, he just gets the catapult. I guess it's an easy target and also gives you a lot of extra gold. It's still a good glimpse to prevent Velo's attack because Velo actually deals a lot of damage. He still has the RP, so he can kill you any second. There's a second shockwave. Between the infused raid up and the... Jesus. Oh, RP starting to come out. Between the infused raid up and the living armor is making it so hard. Now Velo in the top lane is being stuck in the kinetic field with an RP, though. Catches two. He wants to get one last shockwave. Tries to skewer himself away, but the damage from his friend is too much. Velo, one last skewer, but the damage from Aesol, that last auto attack, will sentence him to death. With uh, the RQ guys losing the five boy in the bottom lane, it ends up being pretty even, as is this game as a whole. Velo still farming pretty well, but obviously losing a bit to Yabu's Shadow Fiend, who has dominated this mid lane quite cons Well, actually, no, who has gotten a couple kills in this mid lane. Even though he's gotten killed a couple times, I think it's just the farm he's gotten from the jungle. Yeah, he's gotten a lot of farm from the jungle, that's allowed him to recover pretty well, and that's helped him to do. You know, what you should do, which is uh, get uh, surpass the farm of the, of the sh Ember Spirit in the mid game and be the main carry for your team so you can create some space for Sven. After all, he's probably going to go for a Shadow Blade, a Dragonlance build, or a Dragonlance BKB build. Either way, they're cheap items. Honestly, both have a build up of max 5,800, 5, which is not that much, considering that's your whole build. Uh, and if you even go for the Dragon Bl Dragonlance Shadow Blade, that's even a cheaper build with only. 3600, it's actually less than the whole BKB, so, not 36, sorry, 4800, 4800, that said, more or less, mind you, I'm not adding exactly, but you get the point, right, so the build's are pretty cheap, so the Shadow can create a lot of space, the Sven's build takes a lot more, it's Blink, BKB, Mask and Madness, and or Helm of the Dominator, and or, and a sort of life steal, and maybe Echo Saber even, maybe, maybe even Echo Saber, honestly, it's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to build with the Sven nowadays. Hello, stuck in the kinetic field. No, but they're gonna catch it with Storm Hammer anyway. Great kinetic storm. No, sorry, great uh, hook that stops the static field from happening. And, and that in the bottom lane, now they're gonna go on to the five boy. He managed to spell off a lot of damage thanks to that burrow of time. He still has an aphonic shield. Psionics could still die here, but using the regen from the Shadow Nets to know that you can get the skill. It's Psionics plus D. He will now start rooting the five boy. And one last dark pact will finish him off. There it is. Salonex gets that kill, happily goes back to farming, and Tihi taking advantage of his rotations pretty well. He's the man that's creating space right now for RRQ. That uh, little gank in the top lane, where they caught out Velo, is okay, but I don't think it needed the Shadow Fiend at all. In fact, Shadow Fiend going in there at the end just wasted a bit of time, because they could have just killed him with the damage from the rest of the team. However, the gank in the bot lane is only a mid laner going in and they and the carry, and they don't even need the support, so it's actually taken advantage of them quite a lot. And that was a great hook by Raji, by the way. Um, and getting that getting that hook onto Yeah, Aso was killed killed him already. Getting that hook onto the Magnus. Could uh, I mean it's really taken. And Shadow Fiend, like I said, did nothing, but at the same time, they didn't get a kill, which is another important thing, because it's a failed gank. Oh, they don't actually know there's two invisible heroes here. <gasps> the skewer, it's weird by Velo, because he actually didn't know the Reckless Souls was going to happen. They blow him up thanks to a lucky Invis rune, and now Raji is being glimpsed back, stuck into the kinetic field, and all he can do is dismember to gain some health, but... In the middle of that dismember, the Butcher will be brought down as Geek Fan proceed to try to take this tower in the mid lane. Tier 1 is going to fall easily to their might. Or at least that's the idea. Try and take advantage at least of this. Um, try to take advantage of this early Ember Spirit's damage. After all, he actually is a, a bit of a physical damage dealer, so he's pretty strong against teams like, you know, in this against towers in general. And then the seeing chains, catching up the Sven. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Did you see how much damage that did despite his fucking war cry and all that? All your stats, all your war cry, your nice stat gain, everything. Nope, all taken away by that uh, beautiful, beautiful 
damage from the Ember Spirit. Oh, five boys still has borrowed time, so he's probably not gonna die. They still have a hook though. This member being used, there it is. They expected this member, the Dark Pact as well, to hit the five ball perfectly timed. Now the hook to deal a bit of extra damage. They start with a lot of stats, but no, it's not storm in the Kinetic Field come out, and the glimpse bring back the Stark into his death. So does the poor Pudge. They both die, save the Abaddon. No, no, sorry, don't save the Abaddon. Abaddon dies to the punch anyway, but anyway. They both die, they get a double kill just because of a three-man rotation. Again, that was all the disruptor. If Aesol had just stayed there, and Yabu, sorry, if Yabu had just stayed in the mid lane and Aesol had decided to go back to the bottom lane alone, that would have been much more effective because they would have utilized their time more efficiently. Overall, though, Geek Fam get a kill because of how strong Static Storm is. It because it's a spell that actually amplifies its damage over time, meaning that uh, against the Snark, when he was going back with a Shadow Dance, he was able to just deal enough damage. To Okay, then they go on to the Ember Spirit. They've overgrowth him. Yabiu wants to fight him. He has a lot of souls, but careful because the Abaddon is also helping out Yabiu. And Sionis comes in from behind, gets the kill onto the enemy support, but as a result, he's going to die himself. Abaddon using the Mist Coil just to finish him off. And the top lane, Bell seems to be reaching for Koala. It's a huge reach. It's not, they're not going to go for it. But yeah, so Yabiu was suffering a lot against the Ember Spirit, and the Ember Spirit was suffering a lot against Yabiu. Not a problem. Uh, Ember Spirit at Tiki, sorry. So Tiki versus Yabiu, 1v1. But the Alphonic Shield is really destabilizing that matchup because the Searing Chains, first of all, become much more, less powerful and later on of course you still have the effect of oh no koala you are playing with fire here the hook is coming inside ah, the hook is gonna catch uh, instead the disruptor now with a double two-man rp they kill on the disruptor first koala will die second he does get a kill on the punch before he dies but as a result i mean they got two kills one on the enemy carry and one on the support just for a support which is a punch anyway and the punch was present for one of those kills which means more meat stacks I mean, more flesh sheep stacks, sorry. Not meat stacks. <laughs> and that's fantastic. That is fantastic for the guys at, at um, well, Geek Time. I think that's a huge, huge boost. Because I mean, you see Velo going for Midas. This could be punished if the, if the enemy team or Q started being very aggressive. But for now, those RPs have been coming out fine. And there was no need for a blink dagger just yet. Net is followed by the Five Boy. There's a hook. Catches out the Shadow Fiend. He's all the way Searing Chains. Now they try to use the Dismember onto him. But the Phonic Shield saves his life and kills the Crystal Maid and the Five Boy. And Yabiu will both go down these trees. Both their TPs get blocked. But as a result, they do catch out two supports. However, and the tower. However, they did lose two carries, two cores for two supports there. Definitely not a worthwhile trade. Geek Fam very happy with that. Tiki getting all that farm experience and uh, all that golden experience. And now he's beating, I mean, he's still beating the Sven. No surprise there. He, the whole goal is beating the Shadow Fiend. Both him and the Magnus, I guess, are the main carries. The Stark Psionix has really been countered this game because the lane did not go as easy as expected. That dual lane with Trim Protector and Abaddon was very powerful. And the Stark actually had a hard time dealing with both of them because the Curse of Avernus is a... Is a slow per se that gets put on you constantly it also gives him extra movement speed but that's beyond the point first of all you can't debuff the curse of avernus buff onto the enemy team so they're still faster and attack a bit faster and you also have a hard time debuffing the curse of avernus itself because of the dark pact so like i said though stark is a really good counter against abaddon in lane if abaddon gets a bit of help like trim protector then you actually start suffering quite a lot against the aphotic shield damage and that mist coil and all that healing and the brown time etc etc and they get they, they did get a lot of kills against them early game but as you can see the last hit the slark is actually much less uh, farmed than for example magnus and velo has a blink dagger going in with a skewer that was the plan all along but of course yabiu was just a bit too far away to be caught by that skewer. Unfortunate. He already shows off his blink dagger too, so they lost that surprise factor from the blink dagger. This is a hook saving Velo, by the way. A uh, great commitment, a static storm plus kinetic field using the glimpse as a setup. However, the hook will always save you through kinetic field, so it's not really a problem. In fact, they actually have a really good, um, really good way of saving someone from the glimpse or the static storm. In the kinetic field. Uh, it works really well. And the punch has been playing pretty well defensively with the defensive hooks needed. And I mean, saying the Magnus multiple times, Velo can play a bit more aggressively knowing that he has the help from the punch to be able to do those things. It, well, it goes well for Kikan. Because now they still have a, a pretty secure team fight with a bit of ganking of potential, obviously, from this Magnus. But, uh, sorry. Opposite. A bit of ganky potential for this punch, a lot of team fight potential because the Magnus can be a bit more crazy about his initiations. That's the best part about it. Usually teams nowadays search for the counter initiation, you know, Warlock for example, that because it's so powerful, it's so easy to use. If you have a safe counter initiation, Warlock, even the Ravage or the Tide Hunter oh, back in the old days, it's it's an easy way to win a team fight because you wait for the enemy team to go onto you and then you just punish them for it. However, uh, the mag and the Magnus actually fills that a similar role here. However, you don't need to have counter. Or you need to use your spells for counter initiation if you can just use them for initiation instead. 
Uh, oh, the root catches out the Ember Spirit. We'll talk about this in a second. There's still the hole. Catches out Koala. And there it is. This member to bring him down. The Wait, the Living Armor saves him for only a couple more seconds. The rod is too powerful. And they end up finishing off this poor enemy, enemy Sven carry. Like I was saying, sorry, the, the if you are not afraid of initiating, like I said, because you have this sort of safe mechanism on the punch hook or whatever, then you're actually able to do some pretty good initiations and you don't have to wait for the counter initiation as much. So it allows you to be a bit more flexible with your lineup and of course get the domination in the game, which is what Geek Fam is looking for, taking advantage of the Magnus, which also gives you a lot of uh, farm on both your Stark and your Ember Spirit because of the Empower. So you take advantage of that buff and even if you're not fighting, this is something that Lil said, if you're fighting, you win the team fight because of course you're Magnus and you have the extra team fight potential and if you're not fighting you still have the extra farming potential because of that empower which is so great that you have the same team and the stock benefits on the empower greatly because he's a decent farmer but he does look for a lot of core items first of all to be able to you know do something and uh, no careful to in the top lane uh, he's actually well, playing with fire literally here he has a remnant ready so he should be okay in fact, it just takes down a couple creeps. In the middle lane, it does seem like Abiyu wants to initiate onto something. He is going for the BKB, classic BKB build. Oh, careful, Raja. will not fight this. In fact, they have a hook to help Velo. And there it is. Kinetic field It's not going to stop him. The hook goes right through it, like I said. So, Velo is perfectly okay. I mean, they hit him a lot, and that glimpse is, is quite punishing. But as long as that glimpse is used as a setup and not as a some sort of... Like, glimpse can be used in two ways. Glimpse can be used to catch a, an enemy that's running away far away and you know, take advantage of the fact that you have a superior range and a great cast range on glimpse and obviously vision on the enemy to just bring him back or alternatively you can use a short range glimpse like the one they just did to give an easy setup for the kinetic field oh magnificent hook catch to the poor shadow free the skewer to bring him back they have enough magical damage with the veil of discord that's gonna be a dead yabby you right um like I said, the short range glimpse is more of a setup glimpse, like having a pseudo stun onto someone, and then you can set up the kinetic field static storm onto them because there's zero cast point spells. Well, at least the static storm is the, the, not the kinetic field, but you get the idea. However, the issue here is that with the short range glimpse, you can just hook them away and it doesn't take much issue because the hook might be slow, but it's not slower than a glimpse. So you can just predict it perfectly and just take them away from whatever they were glimpsed to. Okay, Raji. That's just the... Uh, wow, the Abaddon is the best way to actually kill him. Put him in a bad position. He doesn't have borrowed time for a couple more seconds. They use a Static Storm though to save his life. Finally gets the borrowed time. He can still fight. The RP is available though. There's the December being used. The Skewer to bring him to the enemy base now with a Crystal Nova to finish him off. Aso is the next target of aggression for Tihi. He wants to follow him through. Has three remnants. The RP comes in. Onto two. The Hulk doesn't even hit him because he dies way too quickly. And this freezing field is zoning out. Yabu has to be very careful where he goes. The Searing Chain catches him, now the crystal low, the frostbite to prevent the Requiem of Souls, and in comes Shepard, another hook by Raji, catches MU, the help from Psyonix, the Requiem of Souls will not come in because the skewer will stop that channeling from happening again, and Geek Fam are just playing around with RRQ right now, with a complete domination by Raji, that punch pick is working wonders for them, going first Etherlands, which makes perfect sense because your hooks have been like you're seeing into the future, so having an extra cast range is uh, fantastic, and and, oh no, Net is gonna get punished for this glimpse. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Oh, tries to TP away. No, they can they can stun it. <laughs> he should be fine. They, they, they should they should be fine at killing. Anyway, those hooks have been fantastic by Raji. Only catching out enemies, putting the Abaddon out of position, putting the Shadow Fiend out of position. The two things that hurt them the most, use, using them in conjunction with a skewer, with, which has been maxed already because the Magnus got a lot of experience gain from that Midas. Look at the levels. He's level 16 together with the Ember Spirit. Everyone else in RRQ is level 14 or even less. That's not only because you're winning, it's also because of that Midas, the value Midas for the Magnus and all those kills they're managing to get, right? Uh, the Skewer is, in combination with a, with a hook, puts the Abaddon in such a bad position that he has to run back home. He doesn't have a TP most of the time in teamfights because he TPs to a teamfight knowing that, the, knowing that his borrowed time will save him. And there's no Blink Dagger yet, yet on the Abaddon, so when he has his borrowed time on, all he can do is run away home. When you've hooked him to the other side of the map and he's here, over, for example, when he got Skewered, he was over fucking here. How you're supposed to get back seriously this is a long way back to get into the possible team fight and there's enemies all over here catching your possible movements oh, wait, that was a bad arrow there it is right and the first hook already brought him to the low ground, which is already kind of hard to get through because that hook just caught him entirely just thanks to a searing chain. And look, I think this was probably another hook. Yep, a hook onto Aso, and that's more flesh heap stacks for this punch. He has 10, which is only because, I mean, he has 10. That's actually surprising. I thought you'd have more. Uh, no, Skewer, gonna catch out the Abaddon. They have the Skewer combination with the hook. 
Where's the hook? Oh, they missed that hook. Uh, in the top lane, they do kill Yabiyu, so they're happy with that engagement anyway. I guess they created some space for Yabiyu. <laughs> or, sorry, for Tihi to get a kill on Yabiyu. And the bottom lane, Sayanas finds out the Dream Protector and just cuts down all his leaves. That was weird. I didn't see the Sayanas kill. It's way too quick on the Dream Protector. Neither do I see. I mean, I don't see many of the kills because they're way too quick right now. The guys from Geek Fem are starting to really dominate this game. And an 8,000 net worth difference. And let's look at the grass. 8,000 net worth difference and almost 12,000 experience difference just early on, minute 22. Oh, the hook did not reach the Fireboy. That was the point of the skewer, I see. And they still have an RP. The Fireboy has his ultimate, though. And oh, we got a look on Surge using the RP. Stuck in the infinite field. They still have a hook to save him, so it's fine. They're playing pretty cockily here. Here comes the help from Psyonix. Oh, that creep is making the hook impossible. They pounce him, though. Bird time will come up by the Fireboy. He's forced to, actually. Psyonix has no Shadow Dance, though. He's been put in a difficult position. Goes back to the Static Storm. Can't use his ultimate. The Hulk to save his life, but now the overgrowth stuck gets him stuck. The RP onto two. The Slug's already dead. In comes the Ember Spirit. They need to help this team from Geek Fam because they have no damage right now. And RQ is full burst mode. They get a double searing chains though. They might even kill the Abaddon if they're not careful. Raji goes with the Sheffer. The Abaddon's already dead. And there, Raji sacrificed himself to get some space to the rest of the team. A Frostbite from Ned as well. He was just doing the same against Asil. But hey, Teihi mm, could be dangerous person if no, no no if he wants to go on them he had no mana so he decides to go back home in the end sacrificing two supports for the possible carries that could have died there pretty wise play by geek fam obviously still a win for rq especially that kill on psionix but it could have been much worse for them if the ember spirit of the magnus had been caught out after all psionix does not know this or maybe he has a hunch about it but his net worth is quite low compared to the enemy heroes i mean he's only 200 below them right now but that's probably because it's thanks to the team fight but you can see that the difference is not too high, whereas killing the Magnus or the Ember Spirit would give them a bit, yield them a bit more. They're also the ones having the impact right now, so Onyx is more just trying to farm. However, the late game for the guys at Geek Fam is not particularly bad either, so it's not like they're worried that Sven will go late game and they can't fight against him. You have a Magnus without good RP and he's off lane, meaning that you did not waste an off lane or a mid slot on someone that wasn't really a carry like you do with a Puck, but he gives you a lot of team fight potential and a lot of, uh, obviously, farming potential. And on top of that, you always have an Ember Spirit, which deals a ridiculous amount of damage, went for Maelstrom build, for the hybrid build that deals both physical and magical damage, and oh, Skewer caught out the Tree Protector, they know where he is, Shepard's gonna be cut down by the power of Geek Fam, and I love Geek Fam, <laughs> that sounds good, Psyonix, as him similarly, is really gonna like him, fantastic hook from Raji, he's using a 4 step from his teammate, but there's a Static Storm, they catch Raji inside, so he can't hook anyone away, and Psyonix has to use a Shadow Dance as soon as he comes out of the Static Storm, but now they go on to Abaddon, no burn time onto him, he has the Aphonic Shield, but he can't even use it in time, he gets destroyed, he even tried to deny himself with a Miscoil, but he was gonna die anyway, uh, sorry, he tried to deny himself with a mis Miscoil, but it took too long, and of course, he couldn't get that kill, the Echo Saber is available for Psyonix, so he could just actually just go on easily. However, they had a sentry there, so they could have seen him. I don't know if he saw that in time, because I don't know if they had vision of him at any point. However, they did get... I mean, he survives. Oh, there's the skewer. Attempt to skewer fails. The hook also fails. He was hoping Yabiyu would not get so close. And Raji's now stuck in the kind of field. I don't know what to do with a long range dismember because of that ether lens. In comes his man from behind, but they've already rooted him. And Koala is the objective. They're going to take him down easily with the three remnants. Velo's now fighting Yabiyu. And he's actually mind fighting a Shadow Fiend who uses the Breaking of Souls. But a hook will save Velo. Allow the Glimpse to bring him back. He has to force that himself away and will manage to do so. Raji coming in with a second hook and the rod as well to help him out. Searing Chains, the double root. Piled upon each other. Now the pounce in the dark pack. Shadow Fiend will go down. And the hook will cancel his TP. No. They actually gonna use a skewer for that because the hook doesn't actually cancel TPs anymore. Who cares? They managed to kill off Ace Last, the most important part. The Abaddon is back <laughs> alive and the Bird Time is again available for them. The Fi Boy losing all his Aphonic Shield charges. Still still have to dismember. First the root. Have to stop him somehow. There's finally the Bird Time used. And the dismember will come out by Raji. That's exactly what they need to do to, to stop him for the maximum amount of time. In come the second land of roots, the hook, which doesn't grab anything. I don't know why. The five boy though will be absolutely destroyed by the damage the Geek Fam is putting out. And the trim protector here might even die if they weren't careful. Once it's stun Raji out, and oh, they see him. They have a dust, so Cheffer sacrificed himself to cancel a TP that did not work at all in his favor. More flesh sheep stacks for the punch, and another kill in the name of Geek Fam. Tee, careful. 
is uh, being harassed slightly by Koala. No, there's a Maelstrom. Didn't work out too well for him. Yeah, but you from the back. Oh, from the back, maybe? No, no, no Shadow Blades, actually. I was thinking way too highly of this uh, Shadow Fiend, but he doesn't have a Shadow Blade. doesn't even able to get it either. He's been cancelled quite a lot in terms of farm. The Stark beating him. This Van is the only hope that RQ have left, but he did go for a mid gamey Mask of Madness and Yasha build, which has both drawbacks and advantages. On the advantage side, you have the fact that technically this build would work because you are going to lose otherwise, right? The idea is if you don't get past the mid game, then you're definitely going to lose this game. And so you need some way of being able to beat that, you know, intermediate time where RQ is still quite... Oh, sorry about that, guys. I don't know why the Dota crashed. I mean, in a second, we'll be back. Like I said, it's the idea that if you don't get past the mid game, you never get to the late game, so you're never going to be able to use this Sven if you don't actually do something with him right now because you need him in team fights because you're losing them so quickly. However, the truth is by the same, you know, logic that if you're going for mid-game items when you get to your late game you'd have wasted so much gold on your mid-game items that your late game will be cons or your late game items will be considerably delayed and will not be affected by the time that they get by because the stark will have completely snowballed out of control and you'll be assigned in yasha mask and madness sven which is also a valid way of evaluating things. So it really depends on how you see things and how bad RQ is and how much they need Sven. Right now, the team fight by Geek Time is too powerful for them to go against it. And we even see a minus and a Pudge. You'd really like going for the minus 40 second respawn time over the gold per minute. Just because gold per minute is quite greedy, but god, the respawn time is fantastic for him. So, uh, it's quite greedy, but it's good. Sorry, but the respawn time is fantastic. Minus speed is able to prevent this. Only black goes minus 150 gold per minute. Oh, RP, the goal was Sheffer. But it could have caught out so much more. Or what did this man just do besides commit suicide? Alright, Velo. I mean, oh, he's gonna try to make it out, but yeah, there's no way he's making it out. Yeah, Raji even came in a bit close. Now it's the. Okay, it's the comeback time as Raji just has to feed to. Choo choo! Feed train, guys. Oh, who's the next one? Teehee wants to die too? Come on, join the party, dude! Join the party! They need to catch him with a glimpse. All they need to do is catch him with a glimpse. Ah, they don't have enough vision of him. Alright, good thing they only lost the Magnus then. Oh wait, he's actually the most farmed hero in your team? Oh, issue. Anyway, uh, BKB coming out of the slot, but he's not as farmed as Magnus. Also, he hasn't been able to get Empower the whole game. I haven't seen him with Empower a single time when he's farming. It's more like the Magnus is fighting constantly and utilizing that part of the Magnus, but not the whole Empower. Not the whole Empower faculties and how powerful that thing is. Let's see, Dehe and Sionis now going to be joining forces to take down this bottom lane. Oh, this bottom lane tier 1 town? Yep. Like, that's twice I've been us pretty much a defusible blade on this Slark. Utilize it for something. In this case, objective taken. Good idea. Shadow Fiend, Hurricane Pike finally finished. I don't think that's going to help you too much, but... Positioning is probably the best thing you can do against a Slark at this point in the game. And against the Magnus, maybe a Hurricane Pike might even save you. Wow, I think the field boy might just... His burrow time will be triggered by accident, just with a sleight of fist, there it is. Yeah, that's all they wanted to do, trigger the burrow time, now he's trying to heal himself back up so they can't get killed again, that's a pretty good idea, Sionyx coming in from behind though. Sionyx. I'm not gonna kill the Abaddon. Instead of Silver Edge, will you better use them for other endeavors? With the Shadow Dance, he knows when the enemy team has wards, so it's not really that big a deal, he's, you can be very safe with the Shadow Dance, uh, sorry, with the Silver Edge going around and everything. There is the Silver Edge again. No, not even gonna use it. Start seeing wards, and he uses it immediately. There's actually two wards over here. Very defensive wards in the enemy jungle. RQ is playing well, I'll, gra I'll grant that, especially in the warding zone, because they have defensive wards, knowing they need to farm. Oh, Regular Soul is gonna catch up. The four Ember Spread, he's dead. He's as good as dead, even with a slide of fizz, he's not able to do much. But I honestly could caught in the back lines with uh, the centers of the disruptor, but he's unable to Shadow Dance and TP away. And they do have an area stun, but there were no creeps around them, so he wasn't able to use the Storm Hammer effectively there. Which is unfortunate. I actually think he used the Storm Hammer at the beginning of the team fight anyway, because I think it was a cooldown, but that's beyond the point. So, it seems like RQ is not done yet. <clears throat> For now, they are fighting their way to victory. And, or at least not to victory, but at least to a decent sized comeback of sorts. A, a, a pseudo comeback, you know? A comeback that almost happens. Because they are doing, they are recovering in terms of net worth. Difference is now only 8,000, so we can have such a great difference. They're starting to kill the more important characters, and Sven is getting a lot of farm. In fact, the difference between the cores right now is really low. The only difference here is that Avalon's really not farmed at all as an offlaner, and uh, Pudge is. Oh, oh, sorry, Andy. 
the Magnus is. That was a really good hook, forcing the BKB really early to get this Roach on. But now they're gonna fight for sure. RP comes in, catches two, but he can't skewer them anywhere. There is the skewer just defensively to save his own life. Velo has to r run away from Koala, but it's not gonna be able to. Koala with the Stormhammer finally killing him off. Asos also killed off the back lines thanks to the, uh, the psionics damage. I wonder if he can go on anyone else. Koala seems like a pretty dangerous target. The hook catches out Yabiyu and this member. No, no use for it because the Hurricane Pike will save Yabiyu. Now Seong's using the Shadow Dance to run away. And in comes the Ember Spirit. He's back into the fray. Teehee wants to join and try to kill something. The Freezing Field came out in the back lines, killing off Sheffer. And I believe, yeah. And Sheffer will go down. No more overgrowth for them, which has already been wasted. And Yabiyu getting caught by another hook by Raji. He must hate this man as the start goes right up on him. The Five Boy will start to use a bar time and heal up, but they'll protect the Jabiu. They root him first, and now Sayonis are stealing stats from him. He has 20 stats stolen, 60 extra agility. Not going on to the poor Abaddon. He's going to kill himself thanks to the plate mail. Losing all those stacks, but getting two kills as a result. He could have just waited, waited two more seconds and he would have been fine, honestly. He had 60 agility. These towers would have melted. Now they can't capitalize on these kills as much, and the net worth is actually not that much in the advantage of Geek Fam. At the end of that engagement, they did win because it doesn't count the Magnus skill, but with the Magnus skill, it's kind of even. If anything, I think RQ actually got a bit of an advantage out of that. Because the Ember survived, the Ember did pretty well, and so did Sayon. Sorry, the Ember survives, and the Ember did pretty well, but Sayonix did not. So. Yeah, that, not so did Sayonix. No, I forgot that he just died at the end. It's unbelievable. Uh, Net got saved by a great four staff just before the Kinetic Field could complete. Let's not forget that the four staff and all those items like that only save you, the Kinetic Field can't complete. Not if it does. If it does, you can't four staff yourself away from it. In case people don't know that. Okay, yeah, he did go for the minus four second respawn time. Like I said, only black is, uh, it's only black that does the whole Midas plus 120, 150 gold per minute. So much gold per minute. Oof. Uh, it's it's a bit ridiculous. I mean, you do utilize it. It's not bad. It does has a punch because the items are quite useful on you. Agonims, Ether Lens, Pipe even. Later on in the game, Four Staff, Blink Dagger, those kind of mobility items. Glimmer Cape as well is pretty useful. There's a lot of items that you can get on the punch. You can become a pretty strong utility uh, hero. Especially when you get a bunch of stacks, because he becomes quite, being quite, he ends up being quite tanky. In fact, look at his strength skin already, 3.2 per level. One of the best strength skins in the game, only beaten by the Centaur, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe one or two more. Maybe, I'm not entirely sure, but Centaur is the, definitely the, one of the few ones that beat him. However, if you do go for the extra Flesh Sheep stacks, you already get 2.5 per level. With the extra Flesh Sheep stacks, you get an extra 1.75, making a 3.25 per level. I mean, that 15 turns into... Um, Roughly around 45, I mean more than 45. Like 48, 49, even 50 maybe. I think. Yeah, almost almost 50. Almost 50 flesh sheep stuff. Which is fantastic because that gives you so much strength to be able to tank things down and you can just go full utility and you don't need any more items. Oh, careful, slow. Oh, great hook to put the Abaddon in a bad position and also save Silex's life. The Five Boy now can be harassed a bit by Tiki if he chooses to do so. There's a Veil of Discord, not activated yet, and that's why the Renans couldn't kill the Abaddon. That's only a level 2 of Phonic Shield. Oh, the hook almost catches WU. That long range hook from downtown is so effective. And comes the RP from behind, catches the Sven. There's a really valuable target. The Overgrowth might save his life though. Here's the BKB. The spell that, that RP from. Oh, got the rock for Abaddon from behind, but the Static Storm stops the uh, hook and the dismember from hitting him. Now they kill Seonix, and Yabiyu will finish off too. Now they're trying to go onto the Crystal Maiden. That's the easiest target to go for, so Net will just die quickly as the Ember Spirit tries to evade Sheffer's damage, because he's inclined to go onto this Ember Spirit, but he's not going to die. Uh, Crystal Maiden will go down, and in fact, it seems to be a comeback by RRQ. It does seem to be a comeback by these heroes. Uh, it's surprising, honestly, I, I gotta say. Uh, sorry, I'm saying the that was a weird brain fart that I had. I meant to say the, the hook and the dismember, but I'm not used to seeing the punch so often, so sometimes my, my skill names get mixed up, especially because I do it in Spanish. Anyway, uh, slide of fist to catch on Koala, the Maelstrom, oh, Serum Chains as well. But nah, it's not gonna be this death. Raji, and he's going on to the Fly Boy. And there's the Yule Scepter catching him out with the skewer to put him into a bad position. The Fly Boy is probably should last a bit longer, but with the Blade Nail, uh, he's gonna get a bit of a, a bit of leeway right now, but not too much. So you can finish him off. I mean, they have a lot of stuns to put him down. The Searing Chains as well, very effective to stop the Fly Boy from being too, to dealing too much damage. There's the second damage from the Rot. Ensuring with a 4 step, they ensure the second ticks of damage to the Rot, and that's a dead, dead evidence. 
but he went for anagonims even, so he's committed to the whole tanky role, and he's still dying. However, if you look at these last fights, I mean, they haven't died, and that's great, because you took kill against the enemy offlaner, but you've been doing that the whole game. This Ven has already farmed up considerably. That Snark has not managed to really get any farm in these team fights, sadly. In fact, Sheffer might even find him, so I just know someone is here, and needs to dust or do something. He, t he pings, he pings, he pings, and says so there might be someone here. There's no dust used onto him or sentries or anything of the sort to catch this lark. And the end, Geek Fab will be lose. We'll not be getting that kill on. Sorry, we'll not be losing the Stark, which is important. And I go into the top lane and trying to utilize this extra advantage they got in the early game to try to get some kills. It's very important to do so while you still have the advantage because uh, soon our Q will start dominating the late game and it's dangerous to play against them when your carry is not in his late game yet. He has Echo Saber and Silver Edge. He's only a Stark. He's not that powerful. The other carry, Ember Spirit, is more of a. Again, magical damage carry starts falling off as the game goes on. Even with this hybrid build of Mjolnir and even Lincoln's, it's just not going to work that well against what RQ has, trust me. And the Magnus, of course, like I said, did not go even go for the carry build. And we've seen a lot of Magnuses go for the kind of, you know, Bloodthorn Echo Saber build, but not this one. And for four staff BKB Lincoln's, he's actually just a full-on RP Magnus. That's all he can do. It's a moving RP. And that's not too effective if you are, of course... Uh, geek fam and scared of getting into the late game. However, that tower and all those, all that farm actually put them above RQ by 8,000, which is surprising. So I'm actually find Aesil, not want to go on him. And yeah, just gonna ping on him and says pounds, dark pack, easy kill onto him, even dispels the storm hammer from happening, and the hook does not help us Slark at all, but Tiki's manages to get a slight of fist. <laughs> a slight of fist to kill off Aesil. I don't know if that was planned and coordinated, because if that was the case, that's fantastic. But if it wasn't, it's still fine. They got the kill anyway. Second hook is going to catch out the Abaddon. He goes fishing, and he finds a nice mackerel. And this mackerel is by the name of the Fire Boy, wasting his ultimate already. So that means no more 50% resistance. Sion wants to kill him. There's the break already happening on them. They're waiting for that ultimate to wear off, but it's too long. A uh, pounce doesn't catch anyone. In fact, the uh, hook will actually catch their own Pouncing Slark. And Raju won't have a hook for quite a while. Now Neck is hit from behind, but the Force Step will not save him at all. He tries to use the Frostbite to kill Koala, but the BKB gets triggered. There's the RP up to three. Now with the Empowered Slark, starts from restealing stats. He still has the Shadow Hands to keep on hitting, and he's going to activate. He wants to go into Sheffer, but doesn't kill on the kill yet. The Pounce, and Sheffer still surviving thanks to that Living Armor with a Skewer to bring Sheffer and the Fireball into the same space. They're going to kill off Sheffer first, but Raji has sacrificed his life as a result, and this Slark has stolen 26 stacks. 78 extra jewelry and still can't fight the enemy team. Jesus Christ, it needs some sort of initiation. I mean, he should be using this for something. Has a silver edge. He's waiting to go on Yabiu, or even better, the Five Boy, but Yabiu seems like an easier target. There it goes with the break. The damage is considerable, but maybe not enough. Sayonara so starts stealing stacks again, and there's a double skewer. Uh, another great team fight by Velo, catching on Yabiu finally, and with the last hit, Tihi will ensure that kill. Double kill for Tihi, unstoppable streak. He barely did anything there, except for the Syrian Chains, but wait. Great skewers that we're seeing by Velo and Sionis still stealing more stats and making use of it to just farm as fast as he can. Using the Empower adds so much damage and so much attack speed. Jesus Christ. I mean, he bought a butterfly, essentially, or three butterflies. <laughs> attack the tower, please. Alright, we're waiting for the backdoor protection. I think you're gonna take it down regardless of backdoor protection, but whatever. And he just snowballs more and more in team fights now, let's not forget. They take it on the ward, using that gem pretty efficiently. Have you noticed how much they need to kill a team protector to prevent that overgrowth from happening? It's really annoying. That overgrowth is insanely annoying when you don't have that many BKBs in the team. Well, oh, say Onyx starts to destroy this tower. We'll manage to take it down pretty swiftly. Now they go into the melee racks. Okay, I'll focus Koala to still fight this. Yeah, but the melee racks are falling quite quickly. Again, say Onyx still has 23 stacks. The hook comes from behind, only catches the creep. <clears throat> so he deals 66 extra damage because <laughs> of the agility stacks, it's pretty nice. They want to go on to shrines after taking their tier 3s, and the ideal thing after this would be taking tier 2 and finalizing the whole being able to split push strategy, right? You have two empowered heroes that split push really fast, and Ember specifically, and the issue here is they haven't taken a tier 2 yet, so you can't really go for the racks of the enemy team. That's an important, that, that's not good for you, obviously. Zonix recovers really a lot in farm though with these couple uh, objectives. Obviously the supports also do and the Pudge is actually able to get his Shivas or get closer to the Shivas which is very nice. Especially because he's been the Abaddon in terms of farm so that means that the Abaddon has become more of a useless carry because he didn't go for the Midas and that got punished heavily this matchup. The Sven finally goes for the Bloodthorn, which is expected, but the Slark is not... I mean, he's worried about it, but not too much, because the BKB is still available. And, of course, you have the Dark Pack, in case he does catch you with a surprise Bloodthorn, and you can see it in time. Oh, Raji, forced himself away. Not to safety, but uh, closer to safety. 
They use the blood throw now onto him. They want to kill him off, but he's still alive. Can use the dismember to commit or to survive. Not just one final four staff. He's gonna survive. Sock is being caught in the back lines though. Use of the shadow lines. The overgrowth catches him. He has to run away. Manage to do so. The RP catches down too. And Velo was just trying to save his teammate here. Not actually trying to initiate a team fight. Tihi. Careful. No, he gets. Ooh, okay, that was the point of the Stormhammer to cancel the Lincoln so you can come from behind. So I was just throwing 8 stacks, though. That's a pretty good amount of agility. That's 24 agility. Might want to utilize the Koala, but they see him. Silence is using the BKB and pounce away to survive. Now the dismember catches out a Shadow Fiend. They want to kill him in time, but they don't have enough damage. Abby U will survive this. They wanted to get a skewer in, but apparently they didn't. It was on cooldown. So where's the skewer finally happening? Miss Yabi U. The shock was just to finish him off. And there it is. They get the kill onto the enemy mid. However, this poor Storm Ember Spirit has been put in the same position. He's been silenced. Koala is helping it kill him in the middle of the static storm, but they are taking a lot of damage on the Magnus, and one of them is gonna go down. Take to the Ember Spirit. That is also a hook that misses and psionics helping to clean up this team fight after everyone died for rrq sorry after everyone died for um as everyone from rrq got really low on hp they actually managed to clean up the team fight because of psionics great great skills there and now they're going to be able to take down a tier 3 in the top lane. Velo with the Empower, helping out Sionis also to take this tower. They only have 12, which is 36 agility, but that's almost a butterfly for your slug for free. That's another lane of racks they can take. And in fact, I would just go for a throne at this point. There's no point in going for another lane of racks. You already took two, and two lanes of racks is already really hard to come back from anyway. So, yeah. They, you know they don't have buybacks in the enemy team, or you expect they don't have buybacks, honestly. It's pretty early in the game, or they haven't reserved them, they haven't been using them. So you're either forcing the buybacks, or yeah, they're the GG. They're the GG from our Q. They will GG out from this game number two and give it over to Geek Fam, who will be taking it quite swiftly, taking advantage of that Ember Spirit pick and a fantastic, fantastic Magnus and Pudge by Raji. Never let Geek Fam have the Pudge. Apparently, that is going to win them the game. That said, guys, that is me for today. It's been a pleasure casting these games for you, but that is the SCA region of this tournament completely done. Geek Fam get a tie for this match and Dota crashes the say this who cares so if you did enjoy the cast feel free to follow me on Twitter at the sort of if you didn't feel free to tell me why in the comments below and like I said all the replays are seen in my personal channel so feel free to go to Twitter to find that out and I will be saying goodbye to you guys today it's been a pleasure casting geek fan versus RQ we'll come back tomorrow with some of the playoffs for the SCA region of this tournament so stay tuned and follow the pro Dota cup channel if you are interested in watching more of these games and I'll see you guys next time with some more Dota 2.